اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ بار الخلائق الاجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین ثم الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء حبیب قلوبنا و شفیع ذنوبنا ابی القاسم محمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و الصلاة والسلام على اہل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین لا سیما ولی اللہ الحجت المنتظر المحدی عجل اللہ تعالی فرجہ الشریف روحی و ارواح العالمین له الفداء و لعنت اللہ على اعدائهم اجمعین من الاولین والآخرین الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد Respected brothers and sisters, Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In our previous episode, we had spoken about the concept of imama in that it is a divinely appointed institution and that the wasi or the khalif that succeeds the holy prophet is appointed and selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where our 12th imam says, وَتَخَيَّرْتَ لَهُ أَوْسِيَا Then the imam goes on to say, مُسْتَحْفِذًا بَعْدَ مُسْتَحْفِذٍ مِنْ مُدَّةٍ إِلَى مُدَّةٍ إِقَامَةً لِدِينِكْ وَحُجَّةً عَلَى إِبَادِكْ The Imam goes on to say that this silsilah or this change of awsiya, successors or khulafa is one that is continuous upon the martyrdom of Rasulullah there was a series of khulafa and awsiya who succeeded the holy prophet and upon the martyrdom of one khalif the following khalif or the following imam succeeds him and all of these taban as per our last episode are selected by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore you see that upon the martyrdom of rasulullah or after the martyrdom of rasulullah there is a continuity in divine guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Divine guidance does not stop upon the martyrdom of Rasulullah. It does not stop upon the martyrdom of one Imam or two Imams. La, you find that this is a continuation or you see there is a chain of continuity upon the martyrdom of one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints the other. So as for what reason? Mustahfidan ba'da mustahfidin min muddatin ila muddatin in that the Imam each imam is a protector for the teachings of the of islam he is a protector of the teachings of rasulullah min muddatin ila muddatin from time period to time period yani as across the passage of time throughout the passage of time there is there has to be a guide on earth who is selected from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is no guide that means that the world is left without a representative of God who will guide the people towards the truth and protect the religion, explain the teachings and the tenets. How will the people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there does not exist an imam who calls the people and teaches the people on how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is injustice from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he punishes mankind for not obeying him, for not worshipping him when in the first place this Allah didn't even send a guide. Then the people could turn around and say, Ya Allah, how could you expect from us worship and obedience when you did not even send to us a person who would guide us to the right path in the first, in the first place? <coughs> and you find the Imam points towards this in the continuation of the dua. مستحفظ من مدة إلى مدة إقامة لدينك وحجة على إبادك ولألا يزول الحق عن مكره ويغلب الباطل على أهله ولا يقول أحد لو لا أرسلت إلينا رسولا منذرا وأكمت لنا على من حاديا فنتبع آياتك من قبل أن نذل ونخزى People would turn around the last part of this dua which we recited, the last part of the dua, lest the Imam says, you sent down prophets and guides 
such that the people tomorrow on the day of judgment would not have an excuse in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can say to Allah, Ya Allah, you didn't send for us a Nabi or you didn't send for us an Imam such that we didn't know where to take the teachings of our religion from. This is one. Number two, you find that one of the philosophy or the reasons or the functions of an Imam or of a Nabi is what? The reasoning or the function of an Imam or a Nabi is to ensure that falsehood does not prevail over Haq, over truth. Just as the way this statement is applicable on the Anbiya or on the Prophets, it is also applicable on the Imams after Rasulullah. The function of an Imam is to ensure that the teachings of Rasulullah are not distorted, that the teachings or the deen which the Holy Prophet gave us is not distorted over time is not changed over time is not misinterpreted over time this is the role or one of the roles or the functions of the imam to protect the religion from inhiraf to protect the deen from distortion you will see across the passage of time certain people came and they changed the way for example in which the holy prophet prayed did the holy prophet pray with his hands down or pray with his hands folded for example, in these cases, it is the role of an Imam to show us and to guide the people of the prayer of Rasulullah by way of example. Therefore, the function of the Imam is that he protects the religion from distortion across the passage of time. You find even within the books of Muslims, unfortunately today, that there are certain narrations that talk about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body. Enter Janabi, open one of the books and you will see that there are traditions that state that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or astaghfirullah al-adim from these words, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall put his leg on into the hellfire on the day of judgment. And then he will ask the hellfire, are you satisfied? And the hellfire will say, enough, enough, ya Allah, ajeeb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a leg, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body, 23 years Rasulullah broke his back and exerted entire effort in order to preach the message of Tawheed. Ya Baba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot have a body. If you say that Allah has a body, that means he's mahdood, he's limited. If he's limited, he's restricted to time and space. And if you restrict him to time and space, then he's not a Lord anymore. He's not the all encompassing, he's not the all mighty Lord. Yet you find within the books of the Mukhalifin, they say, Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a body. And you will find across the passage of time, the Imams worked extremely hard to discount and to negate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have a body. You find this within the debates of Imam al-Sadiq, the companions of Imam al-Sadiq, but all the Imams you will find, their teachings, their debates, their sermons, the way they groomed their companions around them to be eloquent within the debates of Tawheed, to be eloquent within the debates, the existence, for example, or the occurrence of the Day of Judgment. A number of Muslimin, even in this day and age, negate the occurrence of the Day of Judgment in the fact that it will be a resurrection that is physical as well as spiritual. You find law, a group of people come and say that no, it shall only be the soul examples of proofs from the Quran, from the Sunnah of Ahlul Bayt, from the teachings from the Sunnah of Rasulullah, from the teachings of Rasulullah, whose job or whose function was it to protect the teachings of Islam from any sort of distortion and from any type of corruption across the passage of time. It was the function of the Imam. And this is what our 12th Imam Al-Hujjah, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, points towards in this part of the dua wa akhirud da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin at-tahirin